this is my granny for those of you that don't know we've done a couple videos with granny and what year were you born 1934. 1934. You were born right in the middle of the Great Depression. And your family didn't have a whole lot of money, but you had land that you could grow food and we, provide for yourselves. We pretty much raised all our food. I mean, you may have to go get salt or sugar or baking soda. You could get a box of soda for a nickel. You could get a Pepsi for a nickel. You could get gas like for 15 cents a gallon. Wow. Was that cheap then, or was that? Well, if you didn't have much money, it sounded very high. Yeah. Because it didn't go far. Yeah. Because Daddy mostly worked in the mines. Well, most all of them uh, was, was growing up. And there was 13 of us. So. <laughs> yeah, 13. But then he worked at a sawmill a while. But other than that, he I don't remember you telling, telling me about the sawmill. Where was the sawmill? Right below. Where mommy's house is. And he worked, how long did he work there? Before or after know. the mines, or kind of in between? Well, it was after the mines, and then when he retired, he went back and worked, you know, part time uh, surface mining, like moving the dirt and stuff. Mm -hmm. or strip jobs. Gotcha. He got hurt in the mines, knocked his eye. His eyeball out. came, popped out, his right? His eyeball come out, but they put it back, and he could see it. <laughs> He said he's hanging with the thread. So he'd work in the mines all day long for... It, he stayed away for a few days, right? Because it was far away? He had in Kentucky, work, right? He worked in Kentucky a lot, and he worked in West Virginia. But then he'd come home and work the farm. He helped work the farm, but he didn't have much time to work the farm. Oh. But Dennis done all the plowing and things like that. Your brother My Dennis. Oldest brother. Oldest brother, yeah. And he done the plowing, and we done the whole, well, he'd help us home sometimes, but the planting. And, I mean, we had fields of corn. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't garden, it was a field. Yeah, yeah. And Did you sell some, or just make, just for your own use? For our own use. Oh, okay. Cause we, How big do you think the field was of corn? Oh, I don't know. Two fields we had was yeah, more than any acre. Oh, wow. But that way we had to raise what we fed our horses, our hogs, our chickens, mm -hmm. cows, and then raise what we eat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of that. I mean, you'd raise one thing for, like, for the horses or the cows, the hogs, and they got air scraps. What well, we didn't need, but we didn't have many scraps left. But... Uh, it was hard work, but it wasn't all bad. We always had a roof. We had something to eat, always. For that many, they was about eight when times was really bad, you know, during the war and all. And nine. And so it, uh, it took a lot to feed that many. Uh, and so we'd work, the mommy would do most of the garden work except the little ones. Because she had to keep them with her, and they pulled weeds. She'd show them what not to pull and pull everything else, and I mean down to three-year-old. Yeah. We all worked. Yeah, yeah. And Everybody had a job. And one would always sit with the baby on a quilt, because she couldn't leave the baby in the house. So, And then we always think it was a baby. <laughs> but actually, we had good times, and Daddy would kill whatever he Kill for meat, besides as the far, hogs. As far as like wild game, you mean deer and whatnot. He would kill it. He never did kill but one deer, but he killed rabbits, and squirrels, and things like that, turkey. You said he only killed one deer. One deer, like only. ever. That's all he ever killed. Oh I've he he I've heard about that during during the depression and the tough years that the deer were just killed off pretty much well, or none. I guess they were, but where we lived, they just wasn't. There weren't any. Wasn't nothing like that there. Yeah. But uh, that's why we had to raise hogs and cows. And yeah. All that. Yeah. So a lot of people, a lot of people think that there's, you know, when if times get really bad like the depression again, that they're gonna live off the land and hunt and fish. And I think you would have to have a lot of know-how to do that. Yeah. If you was gonna make a living on it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we didn't have all that farm equipment and everything, you know, to work with. Most of it was steep hill. 
steep rocky hill. Yeah. First time we lived in that same house since I was about 10 year old, mm -hmm. nine or 10. But before, I mean, we had huge fields over in the, when we lived in the home. But uh, after we moved up there, they was, they was one field. Well, it must have been two, two to three acres as I saw on such a steep hill. And our orchard was at the top. Mm -hmm. What was there, apples? Apples and cherries. We had sour cherries and sweet cherries. Red cherries, yellow cherries, you know. Different kinds of apples. And we canned, we dried apples. And we canned the cherries. How many apple trees did you guys have? I don't remember. Why? They, they were several up there, yeah. yeah. And then we had some peach trees and plum trees down near the house. Because in the summer you picked greens, mixed greens. And in the winter, then you had to make do with what you had canned and all of that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we never did go hungry, never. Did you guys have to ration out your canned foods for through the winter? No. You had more than enough. We had canned up to 700 cans one year. That was the most we ever canned in one year. And most of them were half a gallon cans. 700 half gallon jars of food. We canned blackberries, strawberries, apples, you know, where we killed them. And we killed chickens and canned them. We raised rabbits, killed them and canned them. I mean, we always had plenty of food. Mm -hmm. Never did. Never did feel like we're short on food, except, you know, like sugar and salt, something right. like that. Stuff you couldn't make, yeah. But you cooked everything from scratch. You didn't, you didn't buy nothing in boxes to make. Yeah. If you made a cake, you made it it's from the ingredients. As mommy says, from your own memory mm -hmm. and the ingredients. We was poor folks, but we didn't act like it. We didn't know we was. Yeah. <laughs> it's just what you did. <laughs> I've got my rifle here, Granny, in case of marauders. Well, just watch for a rabbit. There's rabbits right there. We can have that rabbit dinner. That eating the sweet potatoes. Let's take them out. <laughs> did you did you uh, have to keep a shotgun rifle around, keep critters out of your farm, out of your gardens and stuff? It was always the shotgun set behind the living room door and a handgun laid on the library table beside the bed nobody touched. Yeah. Except or else. Daddy. That's right. Daddy. <laughs> or else. Yeah. Or else. It would have been else. Yeah, that's what. Messed with. <laughs> See, that, that, we all knew to never mess with Daddy's guns, and you right. didn't mess with them. Yeah. He had a rifle, and he had uh, two or three different kinds of shotguns, but there was one 12 gauge, and the, it was a double barrel, mm -hmm. and the barrels blew apart one time <laughs> when he shot, he was hot. Yeah. And they. Put them by, I guess you would have called it uh, solder. Yeah, well, or solder, something. You yeah. can see fingerprints where they put that oh, back yeah, yeah. together. And they... Yeah, did you have to, did you guys have to shoot rabbits and stuff to keep them out of the garden and all that? About every evening in the summer, if you planted corn and beans or any kind of seed, when Daddy'd come home, he'd always take his gun and go to the garden because it was either groundhogs or those little ground squirrels. Something at all time he killed eat the, a, eat the a seeds. weasel. They'd go for the seeds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he'd done that every evening when he'd get home from work, when he worked close home. Did you eat any but, of that? No. Just killed him? Just killed him out of the garden. Yeah. Well, I know. Now the, the groundhog, they did eat that. I didn't, but they did. No, so they did eat some of those things. Yeah. yeah. I heard groundhogs yeah. good. Most of the, well, all the rest eat it except me. I did not eat any. <laughs> yeah. Not when I was little or when I You just refused to? Either. I just could not eat no wild meat. And I don't know why I never did. Mm. Even venison? No. Mommy said when I was little, I did eat some squirrel gravy and I got sick. And she didn't know if that's what made me sick. And she said I was little, but I know from the time I could remember, I could not eat no wild meat, uh, and I still don't. Still won't do it. Never tasted a deer until, uh, 
about six months ago. Really? <laughs> I never could bear the thought to eat it. Wow. But you ate the farm-raised rabbits, right? No. You wouldn't eat those either? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're a picky eater, Granny. I still don't eat much meat. And you know, back then you didn't have a refrigerator. And we had these, like a big milk can. I guess it held two or three gallon or more because it would take two of us to carry it. Mm -hmm. And we had a big, deep, cold spring. Uh, I'd say it was was a quarter of a mile from the house, but we carried it. As we'd go to the field, we'd take that big can of milk and set it in the water. And then when we'd come out for lunch, we'd take it back to the house and it would be good and cold. Then we took it back as we went back to the field and then bring it back of the evening. We had a dairy that was back under the ground. It kept most everything cold, but it didn't keep milk getting cold like that cold water would do. For those of you that don't speak Appalachia, a dairy is a dairy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dairy, that's A right. dairy. <laughs> <laughs> Underground dairy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny when you say it like that. Yeah, it sounds weird. Don't shoot my jar of fly, my Katie did. <laughs> Another one started. <laughs> That's her pet, Katie. When I shot at it, another one started chirping. You guys were able to get through the Depression and the years after the Depression, which weren't much better in the area. We never could tell much different. It was all the same, right? <laughs> yeah, This in this area, it was all pretty much the same uh, during and after the Depression. So yeah, well, you guys got through it by just hard work, pretty my, much. Daddy worked like for 10 cents an hour, and he worked all day for a bag of flour and brought it home as he come, that he had to get at the commissary. Yeah. And which was higher. The mine, at, the mine store. Which was higher at the commissary than it was if you'd have just went to the store. So you, it was right after he got hurt in the mines, because it was a while that he couldn't work at all. When his eyeball got mm -hmm. popped out of his head. He cracked his skull. That's <laughs> what knocked it out. A rock fell or something, right? No, he said? I think it was a rock that fell. Whacked him in his head, popped just, his eyeball out, and they put it back? Just the people that worked with him come and told Mommy. And Doyle was 10 days old, my brother. Mm -hmm. And she took him and went to Kentucky. Said, they told her, said, the harm said, don't come. He's going to be all right. Don't try to make that trip with the baby. And she went anyway, of course. Of she course. didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> but she took Doyle with her, but he was 10 days old. And on the breast, she had to take him. Yeah. Where war started. Because we lived there when Doyle was born, when they bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And then we moved not long after that, and Doyle was still the baby. Yeah, somewhere around 1943. And about 43 years, 44, somewhere there. Yeah. I don't remember. But, uh... You don't remember that? Come on. Come on. You know, I remember <laughs> when Doyle was born. That's all I can remember. <laughs> I can remember what year. Granny's sharp as a tack. <laughs> she remembers the names of her neighbors from 1945. Now, the neighbors I could remember, <laughs> we didn't have many. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> because they helped each other. We would go, like, for bean stringing or apple peeling or corn hoeing and Hey, Rake, and you swapped back and forth. Hmm. I broke your your garden hoe, Granny. Well, that way I don't have to hoe the garden. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I broke it killing a serpent. Well, you want to tell that story? Getting rid of that serpent was worth two hoes. Yeah, there was a there was a snake. I was helping Granny in her garage. We were finishing a wall, putting insulation in and stuff. And there's a snake. A black snake came out of the garage. It had to go. <laughs> And I was just trying to shoo it away, you know, get it out of there. And, and Granny said, what did you say? You said something like, I can't, I won't go back in there. If you... I said, kill it. I don't want it back in there because I couldn't go back if it stayed. <laughs> <laughs> can't, you can't cohabitate with that snake. Can't. We're not friends. <laughs> it don't speak my language. <laughs> oh, I loved black corn. I mean, that, well, I was about 10 or 11 when we had to play all that field up because they 
freeze come, a cold spell. And I believe that was about the 1st of June because I think it was May and they'd already planted the corn. So you planted the corn, it started to sprout up and the frost killed yeah, it? Yeah, it was, it was up enough to bit the top, you know, turned it brown. Yeah. And we had to plow that field up and replant it. And, well, most people knows what a corn planter was, you know, back then, or anybody old enough to know. But uh, it was just like, it made you think of a post hole digger, only it was just like two flat boards together with this metal pocket on it, I called it its cup. And when you go to plant corn, you you opened it, stuck it in the ground and closed it, and that planted your corn, you didn't have to cover it. Mm. And as fast as I could walk, I could plant corn there, and I loved to do that. That was fun, huh? <laughs> and smokehouse caught on fire and burnt the corn sheller and the corn planter Dang and it. the sausage grinder. Dang it. We had two smokehouses, and the one we had just killed the Daddy called it a shoat because he wanted a little pig. Yeah, and put it in there except the two hams. We hung them in the other smokehouse, but the rest was on a table in there where they were curing it. And it got real warm that day, and they started a fire in a bucket, something like a five-gallon bucket. It was a big bucket, and to uh, keep insects out, keep flies or anything out of the smokehouse. And somehow he blazed up and I don't know how he must have been set too close to the wall because he was sitting out here at the door and he'd set the smokehouse on fire. And they was mining caps in there and we couldn't go in to get nothing because they was going off. Why did your dad keep blasting caps? Everybody around there that worked in the mines did. I don't know why. He just took them home and kept them at his we house? We had carbide. Well, I guess each, they called it each uh, section. Had to keep up with their own carbide and their own, because that's how they had lights. Oh. Uh, was carbide. It was like their tools, they had to keep up with and their tools. And then when they shot coal, you know, they had to have the the blasted caps and they had to have the, the carbide and that black powder. And so everybody had to take care of their own in the section they worked in. Got it. I'm swimming. Sage, I'm thinking about keeping this rifle. Can I have it? No. Too bad. <laughs> but I like it. I don't care. It's my birthday, you know. What are you going to do with it? Give it to him for his birthday present. This Red Rider was made in China. Oh, no. Is there, is there nothing sacred left? Everything you have bought for the last 30 years made in China. Even the Red Rider? Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, Granny, tell me more stories. What else you got? Give it to me. Give it all to me. Oh, no. It'd be against the law. <laughs> against the law. There's another thing that you may, Maybe you won't understand if you're not from Appalachia. Against the law means against the law. The law. <laughs> but it's one word. But you I say, get a law. <laughs> but you say it different when, when you're talking foolish, you say it yeah, different. Yeah, I get it's a law. It's getting a law. Get a law. Yeah, just one word. <laughs> That's part of five. That's right. <laughs> chew my cabbage twice. Right. <laughs> I like to say, when you don't chew your cabbage twice, you add a T on the end of twice. Twice. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know one family Mommy gave them seed potatoes, and they planted them, and they didn't have nothing to eat, and they had to go back and get them up and eat them. And another family, everything they cooked about it, they barred it from mommy's, like, meal, sugar, anything like that. They, we had to have our own meal, the corn ground, you know, for meal, and they didn't raise, uh, they didn't raise corn. They'd raise a little garden sometime, but they didn't raise corn. Did you have to turn anybody away? I never did know them turn nobody away. See, they used to be people walking down through there all the time. One man, he wanted to spend the night. I don't know where he was coming from, but he said he was going to North Carolina. And Daddy wouldn't turn him away, and Mommy was afraid of him because we didn't know him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mommy said she's 
sit up all night afraid of him. She said, I don't believe he slept much more than I did because she'd keep here. He slept with his shoes on. I said, I guess he's afraid of us too, you know. Yeah. This is it. Wait, show let me us, test it. Let me show test us the it. trick. Let me test it. Now just do it. What? How does it do it? How does it do it, Sage? Very careful. <laughs> Good job, Sage. People, a lot of people these days think that, you know, if times get bad, they're just gonna like close the gates and shoot at anybody that comes near them. Well, probably will. <laughs> For a but, while. Uh, yeah. Paul Floyd lived just below us. And they were people come by there and stay a week at a time, but he never did turn nobody away. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter who it was or what their problem was. One man stayed and we lived there and it was cold and frosty. And I can remember mommy laughing about that. This man, he spent the night, but he was drunk. And that morning, mommy told him it was time for him to go. He said, Surely you wouldn't send a poor old man out in this hot weather. <laughs> Mommy said, well, it's frosted, so you can go You'll home. be fine. <laughs> he lived probably four or five houses on a pace, but it wasn't all that far. We walked it to school. Hmm. But I guess he was just drunk, and Daddy was afraid for him to get out on the road like that, you know. I yeah. don't think he was a driver. His name was Peter Davis, but I don't know. That's all I know about. You see what I mean? She remembers, she's 89 years old, and she remembers the name of the drunk man that spent the night at her house. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> First and last name. <laughs> it was funny because uh, Mommy sent him home. <laughs> he didn't want to leave. Peter Davis. <laughs> oh, and, Pete. And you know when he's, of course, he quit drinking, but uh, when his house burned down, Daddy was down there or was close enough, he went to check on them, went to see about them. And Daddy said he was a walking up and down the road of singing, and the house was burning down. And some of them wanted to know how he could do that, and he said, well, what can you do about it? You can't save it, and it must be God's will. Might as well sing a song. And he was singing, <laughs> walking up and down the road, and his house falling in. <laughs> what did your grandparents do? Paul Floyd was a justice of peace at Wise. That's all I can remember, cause you know, he was he was getting up in years by the time we come on. And I don't know what he did before then. He was born in the 1800s, I'm sure. Yeah, he was. And I believe that he had been a sheriff at one time. Mm. And Mommy's parents, they had a country store was what they did. I don't know what they did before that either. So mm -hmm. He was sorry. Yeah. Yep. He was sorry. sorry. Daddy said he wasn't worth shooting. Or shooting. Well, that was your uncle. What's his name? <laughs> his name was James. Uncle James. James was sorry. He, he would go fox hunting. He would buy food for the dogs, but he didn't for the children. Really? He would buy uh, evaporated milk and salmon. And I can't remember what He'd else. He'd feed his but, dogs milk and salmon. That's what he fed them, and the children going hungry. Wow. He is sorry. He was worse than that. And like Daddy said, he said, I'd shoot him, but he ain't worth shooting. <laughs> so, but they was never turned away, and sometimes they'd have to come in the middle of the night. They lived right over from us. And they would have to come in the night, and maybe some of the children would just have on a shirt. They didn't even have their pants on, their shoes on. Wow. And had to come down across a little creek and up a rocky hill. Yeah. Because it would have took a long time for them to went around and come around the road, so they would just come to shortcut. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, get worked up about helping people that don't deserve it, you know, like like your uncle, right? What was his name, Pete? What, what was his name? James. James. Pete was the other guy. James. Yeah, no count James, and you know, you people get worked up about helping people like that because they they feel like they're undeserving, right? But, but I feel well, I feel a little bit different because at the end of the day, all you got to do is do the right thing, right? So you help as many well, people as you can. That's that's what I tell them here. You don't hate nobody. Yeah. And if somebody needs help and you can, you help them no matter who they are. Right. And the color just don't count in my book. Mm -hmm. And. I mean, and sometimes it is soreness, but sometimes 
people's family can't help it if that person's sorry, like James was. Yeah. But the family can't help it. The kids can't help, help it. it. Yeah. And so, you know, she, they, they had seven children. I mean, some people do need to need a switch taken to them, right? But Well, that was kind of the way Mommy said. Said it ought to be like the, I forgot who the people was that would tie this, like witches, you know, and they'd tie these bunches of switches and lay them by the door if they wanted somebody to do something that they needed done. And they didn't, it, like, sorry people, they would tie this bunch of switches together and lay them by the door with a note. And they was going to use the switches if they didn't, you know, do so and so. I people used that, to do that? That's what mommy said. They tied I a mean, bundle of switches she and left said, them on the porch. And with the note telling them, get to what it. they wanted done better be done. Or you're going to get it. Or they get switched. <laughs> and I just thought that was the funniest thing <laughs> I ever heard. I told my sister-in-law that one time. I said, you know, I didn't know I was, that our family was called poor. We weren't as poor as some of the other families. But I didn't know that we would have been considered poor people, mm. really, until after I was in my 20s. <laughs> and I was telling Norm about it, and I said, well, I guess we had enough love to go around. Mm. Everybody worked and helped each other, and we didn't know the difference. I said, I didn't know we was poor. And she just started crying. She said, well, that is so sad. <laughs> And I said, well, I just didn't Why know Why is it. that sad? I, I That's said, great. I didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> so, we was out there playing one time, and I stepped on them. It was perfect. And I stepped on one of those hollow weeds. What are they? Iron weeds or something they're called, but they're hollow. Mm -hmm. They're hard. And I stepped on that, and it went through my, my foot, come out the top. Ow. Right there from my toe. And they went and got uh, Doc Mullins, somebody there at uh, Tilden's. Went and got Doc, and he pulled him, pulled it out above, not below, because it went too far. He couldn't get it there, and he had to pull it on out where it come through with pliers. And they put a, they called it a, a warm poultice on it, in case there was any fragments in there. And it was made out of cornmeal, oatmeal, and what we call sweet milk. Now they just call it milk, you know, but sweet milk then. Milk, cornmeal, and oatmeal. They warmed that and put it on the meal and the oatmeal and bound my foot up and I, it never did bother me. And I had on a dress and I backed up to the fireplace and my dress caught a fire. And mommy was out behind the house in the dairy. And I, I don't know why I started crawling. I get, now, I know I'd been told, you know, Stop dropping you the fire, you, you crawled, you know. Yeah. And Lee had that cane, and he was trying to beat the fire out. He wasn't beating me, but I, he was beating the fire out of my dress. And Dorothy run and got Mommy, and she come in there and got it out, and I've still got a scar on my back. It don't really look like a scar anymore. It's just different color. Mm hmm and I know every time mommy would go to put medicine on it, she put linseed oil. Paul Floyd burned it up there. Linseed oil? Linseed oil. Yeah. I told my sister-in-law that one time. I said, you know, I didn't know I was, that our family was called poor. We weren't as poor as some of the other families. But I didn't know that we would have been considered poor people, mm. really, until after I was in my 20s. <laughs> And I was telling Norm about it, and I said, well, I guess we had enough love to go around. Mm -hmm. Everybody worked and helped each other, and we didn't know the difference. I said, I didn't know we was poor, and she just started crying. She said, well, that is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> my son, my son Elijah climbed up in this tree, and for some reason, when he was, he was four or five, I don't, I don't know well, how old he, he was. was little, he might have been four. My four, yeah. four years old, he pooped in the tree. <laughs> He was too excited, couldn't get down. He was like you. having such a good time. He didn't want to come down out of the tree, go inside and use the bathroom, so he pooped it up there. So and Shay come out and found it. So his cousin. You know, I so, guess I'm taking that. What did he do? He said, what did Shane do? He's had a dog. Every poop. time I think of Shane, I mean, he said, he come here and he said, Granny, that dog has pooped in here. <laughs>
I got so tickled and I said, a dog didn't get up in the tree and he said, it did too. I come back here and Elijah was out here and I said, Elijah, was that you? And he said, I couldn't get down in time. <laughs> Shane said, it's a good thing I didn't pick it up with my hand. <laughs> You picked it up with your hand. Even if it was a dog. <laughs> I said, I I'll tell you, I like, every time I think about it, I couldn't help but to laugh. Even if it was in the bed. Didn't he, didn't he like poke it with a stick and smell it? Does he know his dog poop? <laughs> so dog gross. So well, thanks for sharing your stories with us, Granny. <laughs> Even even that kind of even story. that kind of story. Well, it was funny. It was. <laughs> so so, do you have any advice for me and people watching and little Sagey there? Do you have any advice for us going forward into what's poten what's potentially going to be tough times, just like the Great Depression? We're we're heading for one. Yeah. Well, now the Bible says it'll be a time that's never been and ne it never has been and won't be again. So. Yeah, we could have bad times. We may not be able to see it, but somebody will. Somebody will. What do you? What's your words of advice? Got anything? Just learn how to work and survive for yourself is all I know. Because other people don't help you now. <laughs> they don't care where you have enough. They'd probably come in and take it away from you. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you'd probably have to hide your food. You think if so? If you had any. Yeah. <laughs> Even people like talk, like gardens and stuff. You think? I think you had to fend off rabbits and whatnot from well, the garden. Well, right now, I mean, it's been several years up on the mountain, like where Christy and them live. People come by and steal the tomatoes and the beans and so on out of people's gardens up there. Really? They do that now. Yeah. And green onions. Yeah. And food's about as cheap as it's ever going to get. Uh, it probably won't get any cheaper. Mm -hmm. hmm. Any okay. other words of advice for us? Just be good and behave. So all I know, help others, so they might help you. There you go. Help <laughs> others because they might help you. Well, I mean, you might need help, and somebody might help. Uh, yeah. You never know. That's a good way to live life, I think. Help as many well, people as you can. We was always told, if you seen somebody needs you, help them. You, if you had to just share whatever, you, but you help. Yeah. And Daddy would say, you trust others until they prove to you they can't be trusted. Then you keep an eye on them, but don't ever accuse them if you don't know. 